everybody. Welcome into a brand new episode of Give Me the Hot Sauce. As you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, the guy with the red skin who's always perpetually sunburned, <laughs> Timmy Whispers, is not here. He's in Nashville. Hide business deals or what's going on? Well, he's, he's trying to find the hot tour girl. Yeah. And spit on that thing. That's what he said. That's what he told me the other day. I called him on the phone. I said, man, what are you doing in Nashville? He's like, man, believe it or not, I'm trying to find a hot tour girl. I just want wow. to get a picture with Where her. Did she yesterday's news? I don't know how long she can do the hawk to us. <laughs> she, she spit on that thing, Mark. She's always gonna be a she's gonna be a fan favorite. <laughs> no, seriously, America. He's there on business. His little Telerate company. They're, they're yeah. at a trade show right now. Oh, so, okay. So he's there with Rich, uh, aka uh, the bodyguard uh, Frank Farmer. He's there with him, <laughs> and then uh, Phil Collins is also there. Oh, Phil Collins. Yeah, Phil right. Collins is also yeah. there with him. So uh, they'll be back tomorrow. Uh, yeah, he's coming back tomorrow. And uh, matter of fact, I got a little date. With, we're supposed to go do some stuff tomorrow. Uh, we're going to some some cover band. Oh, Somebody's right. playing Tom Petty songs or something. Um, he wanted me to go. I was like, oh, my God. I don't have... Speaking of entertainers, you mentioned as we're getting ready for the show that you saw Adam Amin doing his side, oh! side job. Oh, I'm going to tell you something, man. Shout out to my boy Adam Amin. I'm going to tell you something, man. Super talented guy. Not just as being a broadcaster mm -hmm. and announcer. Uh, guy gets up there, man. He's been spinning records probably, he said, since high school, maybe freshman year at Valparaiso. That's how he made extra money in college was spinning records. And so we were at, uh, shout out to 115 Bourbon Street out in Marionette Park. Mm -hmm. uh, they always take care of us when we come out there. It's first class VIP, treat us like first class VIP. Uh, and so got a chance to watch him spin records and uh, is really, really good. Like, he's really, really good. Uh, good selection of music and like, he, you can just tell he's in his element. He's in his element. People are surprised that that's Adam. When they, they go, wait a minute. And they see me come in, because Adam can go pretty much unnoticed. And then they see me in there, and like, okay, what's Stacey King? They put King? two and two together. Yeah, why is Stacey right. King at this, this <laughs> venue, you know? Yeah. And then they see Adam up there, you know, uh, at Adam Amin, his name. He doesn't have a DJ name yet. We got to give him a DJ name. I got yeah. to give him a nickname, because just Adam Amin is kind of boring. <laughs> Yeah, and obviously he's busy uh, doing baseball on Fox. Yeah. The NFL training camps. He was are doing a opening. baseball game. He was going to a baseball game the next night. Yeah, and that LA. never stops. Never stops, man. Amazing. Hard working man in show business. And I saw, I saw a guy, Jason Benetti, was doing the game in Abu Dhabi with Team USA. Now, I don't he, think he was actually not there. there. Right? Yeah. No, because I was, I heard his voice. Yeah, and I go. Is that my boy JB? Is he in? Is he on that With trip? Bill Raftery? Yeah, Bill yeah. Raftery. So they might have they might have been doing it from the studio like we we did uh, a yeah. couple of times. Yeah, that's with a boys. long trip. It's a long. Because he's got to be back Friday for yeah. Detroit Tigers baseball. There's no direct flight from Abu no, Dhabi no, to Detroit. No, I don't no, think. no, no. He ain't got that type of <laughs> type of scratch either to fly on a private jet to come back home. But he's getting paid. He's getting, he's paid. getting paid. Ain't, not, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, God bless both those guys doing great work. Two of the most talented young broadcasters in the business right now. Hey, we want to thank everybody who watching on YouTube and everyone who follows us on the various uh, audio platforms, whether it's Odyssey or Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get our show. Thank you so much. We've been doing really great this summer, and that's all because of you. I know everybody's interested in what's going on with the Bulls off season. Make sure you like and subscribe so we can continue to grow the show, but we're really grateful for everybody's support. Yeah, I mean, listen, 100 and what are we guys? 180 what? Shows. 186 and we've grown from you've been with us from one yeah to 186 and you know this show doesn't go without the fan support and uh shout out to you guys who watch the show every week religiously uh shout out for the people who actually like and subscribe to the show on yep. youtube we've come a long way from being in a broom closet with gold mics looking like pimps <laughs> you know bad lighting uh, yeah, yeah, bad lighting yeah. yeah you know and, and we've gotten to where we are now we got a great crew working for us we had to go through a bunch of people Till we found the diamonds that we need right now. We got, you know, D, we got Cisco, we, we got my man Slick Nick over there uh, doing his thing. So it's worked out well. It's worked out well. Continue going strong. And we mentioned on our last episode, we have a new addition to the Gimme the Hot Sauce family. D and his lovely lady, Melissa, welcoming their, their son, Mateo. So once again, I want to congratulate him. Do we have the, a picture? Do we have a picture of Mateo? <laughs> we had it last week. Wait a minute. Hey, because it, it was, hey, we had a picture last week, America. He looked but like he was like but 22. It, hey, <laughs> but, but, but the FBI was looking for Mateo. He was like 32 years old. He was an old the baby. Old, hey, the hey, oldest hey, newborn hey. in the history. Yeah. Of he was like, he said, you know, the, doc, the doctor with the doctor with the slap and wake him up. He grabbed the doctor's hand. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Don't put the hand down, Don't be Doc. Don't messing with me. Hey, hey, why, why you had it, Doc? Give me a shot of milk. <laughs> but seriously, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. And, uh, and he looks like the mother. Ahead. He looks yeah. like the mother. Yeah. Melissa. He looks like the mother. Thank God. Thank God. I, I, I prayed every <laughs> night that that was going to happen, America. 
Because there's some people, you know, got a face that only a mother can love, and D is one of those people. I just want to throw that out there to D. <laughs> he got a face only a mother can love. But that baby Mateo is cute. Yes. Even though he's like about yes. 18, he's cute. So congratulations <laughs> to them. And we know people are really interested in what's going on with the Bulls, what's going yes. on with Summer League. And, uh, you know, Matos Buzelos was a guy that was known. You know, he played for the G League Ignite. He was considered a top 10 prospect in this draft. But now people have seen him play three Summer League games, and not a lot of national guys are jumping on board going, this guy could be one of the best players in the draft. Listen, there's a lot of teams right now punching the air. Yeah. Punching the air. Because there's no way in the world that kid should have slipped to 11. There's no way in the world. I mean, the numbers that he's putting up in the Summer League – and Summer League, what people don't understand, Summer League is very difficult for young players to play in because the physicality in the Summer League is, is even more physical than the regular season, okay? Guys are out there scrapping, trying to make teams. They're going to do whatever it takes to make a team. And so these guys are going to, you know, every time he goes out there and he puts on a good show, every, that target's on his back. Guys are going to go in it. But he's played really, really well, plays with confidence, plays with a swag about him. Uh, I like because he got dog in him. Like he's, tr- he's trash talking. Let me out tell you there. something. Eighteen <laughs> years old. Now here's his dunk right here. Watch this. Look at that. Oh, shot slam with the <laughs> Oh, baby, I wish I'd have been there. Oh, lord. Look at the look. Look at the look. Look at the stare. Look at the stare. Yes. Like, boy, what was you thinking? Jumping with me, Daquan Plowden of the Golden State Warriors. He got yeah, plowed well, under. He got plowed under. Us. But I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. That kid, that kid plays with a moxie about himself. He, the more I watch him, he, he to me seems like a small forward. Yeah, he runs the floor. He can put the ball on the floor and attack from all angles. He can, you know, people question his shooting. You know, his shooting hasn't been consistent, but he he shoots with confidence. For a guy who's not supposed to be a good shooter, he shoots with confidence. He, you, you see him calling for the ball. Like, he comes down the floor, ball, ball, ball. He wants the ball. And those are characteristics of a guy who wants to be great. You don't see him running away from shots, running away from the offense. He like, yo, give me the ball. G- g- give me the ball and get out the way. I like that. I, I-, I think he's going to play more than what people think. And they're going to have some interesting combinations now with Patrick Williams, who may be able to slide over to the three, depending on what they do with the rest of the roster. But now those guys are kind of interchangeable. They can play both forward spots. Listen, what the one the one area they're going to be good at is they're going to be long and they're going to be athletic. I mean, what I've seen in the summer league with the summer league players is they've been playing with much more pace. Uh, but Zellas gets out and runs. Like, he he has got score on his mind, and he's got finish on his mind. So if he gets anywhere near the rim, he's going to try to baptize you. I mean, he's going to put you in the basket. So when you see that kind of ability and, and the skill set that he has, you you know, people say, well, it's just summer league. He's going up against, you know, you know, you know, first, second year player. I don't if he's playing against the sisters of the poor. He's still showing you a skill set that he is going to be able to to bring that along into the NBA game when camp starts. You can't teach run. You can't teach somebody to run up and down the floor at high speeds. Either you can or you can't. You've got guys in this league that lumber down the floor that don't want to run, and then you got kids like him who play with abundance of energy that know that if I outrun my man down the floor, there's a chance I'm going to get the ball with Giddy being the point guard or, or Zoe. They're going to find me ahead of that. They're going to throw the ball ahead of him and let me do my thing. Julian Phillips is there getting ready for his second season in the NBA. He's had a couple of good games, and he showed that he's not afraid to pull it from three-point range. I'm sure that's something Billy and the coaches really want to see is for him to not be afraid to take that three-point shot because that'll make him more of a threat offensively. Well, I mean, this is this, this is a good summer for him to get out there and, and show the team what he can do. You know, he got hurt at the end of the year. Uh, but when he, was, when he got a chance to play last year as a rookie, he played fearless. He he was not afraid to pull that corner three. He recognized where his three point shooting were was at its best, and he, he stayed in the corners. You didn't see him venture out to the top of the circle. He recognized these these corners are short. This is an easy shot for me. Uh, you know he's athletic. He's got to put some more weight on. He looks stronger than he was last year though. And now they've got a a roster that's more balanced. Last year was almost all guards and and a couple of centers, and you had Patrick Williams now. Got Dale and Terry. He was like six 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 seven. Phillips is six seven. Patrick's six eight. You know, now you're getting a legitimate forwards, which means, you know, if you get in foul trouble or you have an injury, you're not going to be caught with this small lineup out there all the time. Well, the luxury they have now is they've got versatility. You can run five different guys out there that can play every position out there, which makes it very difficult for teams to guard. They're going to be bigger at the point guard spots, just starting with, you know, Gideon Zoe. 
you know, six 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 eight at the PG spot. That's bigger than you know Javon Carter, who's six two six three. Uh, Kobe's about six five. Now you slide Kobe over to the the two guard spot where I've always said is his natural position. Where now you turn him loose and say, go out there, you know, you're gonna get twenty plus shots. Go out there and get me something. Um, then the the dilemma of now, you know, what what's gonna happen with Zach, you know, and Vooch, you know, two of the older guys on the team with this young movement that the Bulls are going. Uh, the Bulls can't seem to make a deal for Zach right now, which is kind of holding up. You know, I think both parties want something done, but unfortunately the Bulls are, are standing pat because they you're not going to just give them away. You're not going to give them away for a case of Doritos. And then have to throw in a pick. On and, top and throw of a, a pick just for you yeah. to take them. Yeah. So, you know, the Bulls are like, hey, look, you know, we'll bring him back if his mind's right. And he comes back and he's – uh going to be a good teammate no one ever questions zach being a good teammate zach's a good teammate the teammates his teammates love him he's not a bad guy you just don't want him to be coming back with an attitude that he didn't get moved you know yeah. you didn't trade me at the trade deadline you didn't trade me now and i and come back and be upset about that and then have that linger all the way up to the trade deadline because if that's the case mark you can't have a player like that, no matter how talented he is. You can't have a player like that in your locker room poisoning the other young players. I'm not saying Zach would do that, but any player who's going to be disgruntled and doesn't want to be there, you can see that happening. You know, I'm, I'm here. They didn't move me. Um, I don't think Zach will do that. I think Zach, I think the big thing with Zach is, is that he needs to show people he's healthy. Because I think that's the big knock on him right now. Teams like feel like he's always injured. And, I, I mean, you know, he, he didn't miss a lot of games here. But, you know, the ACL injury, they hold that against him. I, I think he has to show people he's healthy. He's got to show his ankle, his foot is, is 100%. And I think he'll start, you know, getting more interest as the trade deadline goes. Because there's always going to be someone, Mark, we talk about this every time. There's always a team out there who think there's one player away from being great. And they'll, they'll do whatever they can to get that. If they know that window is there and they can get to that window with Zach, they'll do it. We're going to have a special guest coming up in just a few minutes, Darnell Mayberry, who covers the Bulls, a regular beat writer for The Athletic, does great work. Uh, he's got a chance to watch the team in Vegas, so we'll get his impressions of what he's seen of the Summer League team and what's going on with Zach Levine. I want to ask you about Josh Giddy, who's playing for Australia right now, their national team, getting ready for the Olympics. He had a really good game against Team USA, almost a triple-double. I think it was like something like 17, 8, and 6. Yeah. And, you know, he, he's a guy that can get out in the open floor and really create. And I know that he's 21 years old, didn't have the best playoffs last year, but his first two seasons in Oklahoma City were really special. And people are like, wow, well, Oklahoma, you know, stole – Alex Caruso from us, but the Bulls like what they got back in a, in a young point guard whose best basketball is ahead of him. Well, and the, and the thing you see out of Josh Giddy is is that he's got NBA experience as a young player, as a starter, not some guy just coming off the bench playing 13 minutes a night. He's got legit starter minutes as a young player. So when you look at what he does with the basketball, the pace that he plays, these were areas we struggled at the last two years without Zoe. So now you got a point guard coming in here who's like 24 years old, who has a chip on his shoulder, you know, like Oklahoma City, you, you're going to get rid of me, you're going to bench me because I can't shoot. Okay, cool. Now he's got a new place, and he's going to be, you know, it's going to have renewed energy. And I think the big thing with, with, with you know, our tourists and those guys should tell him is, hey, look, play your game. You know, you were, you were all rookie team selection. You know, you were, you know, labeled a future star. Play your game. Do what you do. We'll work on shooting. Shooting can always get better. That's what people, you know, I hear, oh, he can't shoot. This person can't shoot. Zoe couldn't shoot when he first got in the league. Zoe's shooting 40% now is his career, okay? There's a lot of guys in this league who struggle, struggle from the three-point line, but if these guys are gym rats and they really work on the game, which Giddy is, seems like he really loves to play, he's going to work on his shot. And maybe that humbled him last year being benched and having Dallas say, look, whenever he has the ball, just back off. Because that would make you want to get better. I mean, we've seen it with Io. We've seen Io improve over the years where, you know, teams just said, don't even guard him. You know, they turn their back and go rebound. So now he takes that personal and he goes out and works on his three-point shooting becomes a better three-point shooter. But the one thing you can't teach that he has, you can't teach heart. You can't teach, you know, the ability to see the floor from every different angle, uh, the vision, the court vision that he has. That's, that's God-given. We mentioned that uh, Giddy had played against Team USA. They played three preliminary exhibition games as they get ready for the Olympics coming up in Paris, which get going. The basketball tournament gets going on July 28th. I've, I've caught a lot of those games, and it seems like they've gotten better every time out. Now they 
They've run some stuff for Steph Curry. The first two games, he, he was kind of like lost. He, he, I think he had 28 points in the last game against Serbia. The problem is you got so much talent. I mean, you've got literally almost the 10 best players in the league. It's kind of hard to divide minutes and divide shot attempts with all these good players. Well, it's the best of the best, okay? Everybody's not equal on that team, okay? You got to, you know, the, the job of those coaches, it's like when you put Michael Jordan and the Dream Team together, you know, you had – these were the best players the NBA had at that particular time, but they all had roles. You, you have to play roles. You're going to have Michaels to star that team, and then the pecking order goes down and down and down. You have guys who on that dream team who were number one options on their team had to be the ninth and tenth guy. Like David Robinson had to take a lesser role. Patrick Ewings had to take a lesser role. That's just how it has to be. Everybody's not equal when it comes to stars on a team. And so when you look at the, the team that's addressed now, you know, who is the number one guy? If you ask Anthony Edwards, he's the number one he guy. He says, I'm always the number he, one option. He, hey, yeah. I'm the number one. I mean, and he's serious. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. When, they, when Steve Kerr said, hey, we need we might need you to come off the bench, he's like, you know, when Kobe played, Kobe came off the bench. He said, hey, I don't see no Kobe's on this roster. <laughs> and he's dead serious. Oh, I know he's serious. So, yeah. so he, he in his mind, he believes he's the go-to guy, okay? Now, the, the, the situation is going to be is, is that, this team sometimes gets bored playing. Like, as star players, they get bored. Like, they're beating somebody by 15, 16, and then they take the foot off the gas. When you looked at Mike on that dream team, when they had you down, you stayed down. There was no, yeah. like, oh, let them come back. And they're beating teams by 35, 40 points, you know, uh, on an average. So, this team seems to let, like, they were beating Australia by double digits and let Australia come back and make a game out yeah. of it. So, They've got to learn how to put teams away and don't give teams confidence. Because you know what else, Mark? When you beat a team by 50, 60 points, the next team that's playing is watching that game like, oh, God. Yeah, look what we, we're oh, in look what we got. And that's, and that's with the dream team. When the dream yeah. team played, that's what everybody would say when they had to play the dream team. They, they were already down 20 before the game started. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, you mentioned the dream team. I saw a stat on, on Twitter this week where Chuck Daly never called a timeout that whole tournament. No, <laughs> they're just destroying. Why would teams. you? Yeah. I mean, you 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 just you you you're, you're just like all right, let the dogs out, <laughs> and they're all pit bulls. They're just like ripping everybody up. Yeah. You don't got to call a timeout. Yeah, those, them dudes call a timeout. Hey, hey, Chuck, we're gonna take a timeout right now. We're we're up by forty. We're tired. I'm gonna get some other guys in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's that's what makes that team the greatest team ever assembled. So when you hear all these dream teams and all, stop with the dream team comparisons. Yeah. There's only one dream team. All these other teams are wish teams. They wish they could play like that yeah. because those guys understood that, you know, we got to, you know, the, the last college team went out there, got beat. So now, you know, people think that they, they can just come and beat America. We invented this game, as they would say. So we got to show people that we're the dominant people that we are. This game started over here. So they went out and put on a clinic and beat the crap out of them. So <laughs> get rid of the dream team name. Just be, just be Olympic, Olympic yeah. guys. You know, it's interesting, too, that uh, they had Kawhi Leonard who dropped out or was sent away wherever. Yeah, we don't know how. We don't know how, what really happened how, on that and, one. And the funny thing about that is Ty Lue's an assistant. So well, he, he and, Lauren, and Lawrence, Frank, Lawrence Frank came out and yeah, said he was, yeah, he was mad about it because yeah. he was like, it, basically, they sent him home. Because at first, it was like he Kawhi ready, left yeah. on his own. Maybe he wasn't healthy. So we kind of left it up in the air. But when Lawrence Frank came out and said we were disappointed because we expected him to be on there and he was excited about being on there, it was like, oh. So Team USA made a decision to cut someone and don't want to own up to it. Oh. And I'm sure if Ty Lue had thought that Kawhi was playing his best, he would have stuck up for him. So that's an interesting story. But then got even more interesting when they had to replace him. They went for Derek White instead of the finals Ooh. MVP, Jalen Brown. And Jalen Brown was pissed. But it goes back to what you were saying earlier about roles. Yes. Derek White will be the 12th man, and he'll be happy to be there. Yes. Jalen Brown would not be happy being the 12th man on that team. No, he wouldn't. And, I mean, there, there's a lot of guys that would have been qualified to be in that position other than Jalen Brown. Like, I think, you know, Kyrie Irving, who was, he ended up breaking his hand two mm -hmm. weeks later, but he was healthy when that call could have been made. He it could have easily been on there. You know, there, there's a ton of guys out there. You know, De'Aaron Fox. There's a ton of guys out there that could have been on the Olympic team. I, I just said, why don't you just keep, you know, the, the Cooper flag kid? Yeah, you know, he'd be fine there. just to, he, he, and, like the uh, Christian like Leitner Christian Leitner. Yeah. But he, would, he, in my opinion, he's better than Christian Leitner. He, he, he could have played with these guys. You know, uh, bring a big guy in, go with a big lineup, have him play small forward, LeBron, AD. I mean, they could have had a different lineup with him out there. Plus, it would have been a good experience for him 
to, you know, because he already showed he could play with these guys. Good humility. Be carrying the yes. bags, getting yeah, donuts yeah, and coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and just be, you know, be thankful for being there. But but a kid who, who's going to be the number one pick, a kid who's, who's already labeled as a future superstar, uh, one of the new faces of the league, he ain't even got to the league yet, and his performance that he did against these guys, I don't care what nobody says. I, I had some friends go, well, they weren't going hard against him. No, they were going hard against him because that's the last thing you want as a 17-year-old to embarrass you. And everything's recorded now. Everything gets recorded. the video. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like when the Dream Team lost to Bobby Hurley and them. Yeah, yeah. No one had video of that because back then you didn't have that. And so you had to hear about it. And then so you heard the young players, Jamal Mashburn, yeah. talk about how they killed them and we beat them, da da But the next time the Dream Team played them, they, they ran them out the gym. Right. And they made a point and say, okay, yeah. But this Cooper flag, I'm telling you, he is the real deal. I saw some of the practice sessions, and I'm like, you couldn't tell who was a pro and who was the, uh, the amateur. Because yeah. he, I mean, he was going to Anthony Davis, defensive player of the year, killing him, killing him, straight killing him. We talked a little bit about Summer League earlier, and I, I don't know how much you've had a chance to see some of the other games that didn't involve the Bulls, but did you see the number two pick, Alex Saar from France, went 0 for 15 in a game? Yeah, listen, oh, my god, America. And that Risa Shea is hurt now. So you, these two kids from France, number one and number two, they're going to struggle. Let me tell you something. And I, and I said this. I said this in the, when the draft happened. This is a guy who, you know, you know these are guys that – they got hot at the end, and people thought, you know, the Wimby success, and, you know, oh, these guys are great, da-da-da. Yeah, yeah. You didn't do your homework on them a lot. You didn't do your homework on them a yeah. lot. You know, this kid, Bucellus, was a consensus number one pick. You saw him all year long. This is why I say, like, when it, when it comes to drafting, like, you see guys just get nervous when it comes to draft time. They'll have a guy at a high spot, and then all of a sudden, they'll get nervous because they'll think, well, this guy's – playing better right now than what he played the last game yeah. he played in the G League. I don't care. Like, the eye test. You got to go by the eye test. Don't go by what someone else's yeah. report was. And that SARS not even on the French national team. So that tells yeah. you what you yeah. need to well, know. Exactly. You know, they so know that, what kind of so player. So like I said, a lot of GMs right now, after watching Buzelos play, are yeah. punching air right now and, 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 and saying, who's responsible for this? The owners? <laughs> I guarantee the owners like, who, who didn't pick this kid? Yeah. Why didn't we pick this kid? Terrence Shannon. Terrence Shannon slipped all the way. Oh, he's been good, uh, too. Connect. Really good. All those kids slipping down to, like, 17, 18 should have been lottery picks. Connect looks like a, a, a legit pro. I got to give Stacey his props now. He was saying for the draft that the Bulls should consider taking Shannon. Yeah. And, and people in that range now are all probably – Yeah. The Bulls are happy with Bazellus. Because we didn't think we were going to get Bazellus. No. He fell. So yes. So we're happy to get him. But Shannon – Went what twenty two? Yes, and yes, he yes. To Minnesota, much higher. Should have went because again, people form these opinions on these guys who are older. Okay, it, 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 you stay in school now three years, you're considered old, and so they don't go for the 23, 24 year old. Okay, they want the eighteen guy with the the high upside. Yeah, give me the twenty three year old can walk out there right now and play because you know what? At the end of the day, you can have an eighteen year old on your team, and he'd be out the league in two years or be in the G League for the next two or three years. You give me a 24-year-old like uh, Dalton Connect, that kid could be have an NBA career of 10 years or more and be an all-star. We're going to talk a lot more about the Summer League with our special guest Darnell Mayberry in just a second. Before we do that, one more thing I want to talk about the NBA. Taj Gibson at 39, signs down with the Charlotte Hornets. Remember when he was drafted? Again, they said he's too old. He's too old. He was bad pick. Yes, bad pick. At 39, he's still going strong. Now he's going to be the leader in that Hornets I'm going to tell you room. something. The reason why Taj still has a job to this day is because his work ethic and what he what he means to teams when he's on your roster. He's a great role model for, for young players. He goes out there every day, hard hat, lunch bail, and kids follow. And he's a good teammate. He's a good person. Shout out to Taj, yeah, who's still doing it at 39 years old. Uh, I'm so happy for him. One of my favorite Bulls yeah. players when he was here. Just got a great worth ethic and a, just a great person. And good things happen to good people. I was thrilled to see that. Hey, before we bring in Darnell, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors, our friend Jeff Vukovic. When it comes to being treated like royalty, our guy will take care of all your insurance needs, auto, home, and business. Contact Nationwide Agent Jeff Vukovic. You can reach him at jeffvuk.com. That's jeffvuk.com. The phone number, 847 847- 825-4783. Got a jingle in you? Nationwide <laughs> is on your side. <laughs> Little Barry White version of the ah, nationwide jingle. Yes, sir, Ski. 
Darnell Mayberry, our special guest next on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Give Me the Hot Sauce rolls on. It's now our pleasure to welcome in Darnell Mayberry, the outstanding Bulls beat writer for The Athletic. You can also follow his Substack, Money Talks 101. He's the founder. He's done some great work with that. We'll, we'll talk about that before we finish up. But first, Darnell, I know you were in Vegas. We started the show talking about Buzelis. I'm sure that AK and Mark Eversley got to be thrilled that he fell to 11. Yeah, AK said it on draft night, and they didn't expect him to fall to 11. And and AK joked about it. You know, a Lithuanian from the Chicago area being drafted by the Bulls, uh, you couldn't plan it. So the um, the the first impressions, Mark, I think I'm with everyone else. I like what the kid is showing so far in summer league. He's um, got a lot of versatility. He's assertive. Um, and, and he's, he's got some skill to him that you really like to see in a 19 year old. So, uh, it looks like the bulls got a nice young prospect. One of the things Darnell that I, I've seen that I liked about the kid is that one, he's got some swag to him. Uh, mm-hmm. he doesn't back down, you know, he's got that little, he's got that, uh, he's going to let you know when he does something good, a dunk or a move or whatever, but he, he looks like he's very comfortable playing the small forward position. He looks more like a small forward than a power forward. Yeah, I mean, the thing I love about his size and length is that you can play him in multiple positions. And so, you know, I know you're not pigeonholing him, Stacey, but the fact that you can play him probably at the three to four, uh, slide him maybe to the two or the five at times, he prides himself on being able to be versatile and play different ways and different roles. And you're seeing that with – him defensively, especially, uh, he talked about when we were out in Vegas, being able to guard one through five. He wants to go out and prove that he can guard one through five. And so defensively, that's where I look at him more than offensively and saying, can this guy guard multiple positions at the NBA level? All three of the Bulls two-way guys from a year ago are playing in Vegas. Julian Phillips is out there. The local kid, DJ Stewart, is running the point. Who else besides Bozellis has caught your eye in the games that you've seen? DJ Stewart's played well. I'm glad you mentioned him, uh, but chances are he's not going to be on the Bulls roster. It'd see, be interesting to see if he gets a Windy City Bulls contract. But uh, Julian Phillips, just another guy who's going to be with the team. Uh, I like the assertiveness that he's playing with. He's find a, He finds a way to find uh, himself around the ball a lot, and, and I really like his energy level uh, and his activity level. Uh, whether it's rebounding or, you know, making his teammates better, making an extra pass or going in there uh, and attacking the basket. So he does a lot of those little things that I think help teams win games. When you when you look at what the Bulls have done this summer, you know, the, the, the kind of going to a youth movement, uh, not building through the draft, but bringing in young players with NBA experience that's under 25 years old. What do you think – that has looked like so far and have you agreed with that move because a lot of people don't agree with it they say, oh you can't do that you shouldn't do that but i think it's really good i i think it, i think they're gonna be a lot better than what they think i don't want them to be good good because we want that pick but <laughs> i think they've got enough young talent to evaluate the next couple of years to say these guys could be on this roster long term yeah i agree with you stacy I, I actually love the direction they're going we might have disagree on this. I thought they should have done it a year or two yeah, ago. Yeah, well, I did too. I did too. Okay, all right, cool. So the thing is, is now that they're finally doing it, I think the a lot of the criticism is, well, they're not getting enough return on the value that they had in the in the assets they had. DeMar DeRozan, Alex Caruso, we all talked about maybe they could have got uh, some draft capital, if not a first-round pick, maybe some second-round picks from the Oklahoma City Thunder when they're sitting on all of that draft capital. So – uh, you know, they can obviously probably have negotiated deals differently, but I do like Josh Giddy's skill set. Um, even Chris Duarte, you know, you throw him in there. It's one of those three and D type guys, um, you know, has a lot to prove and aggressive mentality. Jalen Smith coming over from Indiana. I mean, I like the young guys that they're bringing into this team. It's not just modest, the 11th uh, overall pick. Well, the one thing that they still have to resolve is the Zach Levine issue. Obviously, DeMar DeRozan now in Sacramento, Caruso with the Thunder. The thing that mystifies me, I know the biggest impediment to him being traded is the contract. People don't want that three years and all that guaranteed money. But you think back, you know, we're just about to start the Olympic basketball tournament. Three years ago, Zach Levine was praised for being willing to take on a, a secondary role as a defensive player off the bench for Greg Popovich and Team USA. He's averaged over 25 points a game a couple of years. He's been a two-time All-Star. I know he was hurt last year with a foot injury. 
Why do you think Zach has been so devalued around the league? And people say, well, any any contract is tradable. Well, the Bulls have found out they can't trade this contract. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the contract, the injuries. Um, Zach obviously thinks highly of himself as a go-to scorer, and he is a go-to scorer in this league, and uh, he should think highly of himself. But you then try to mix that with a LeBron James and an Anthony Davis, uh, you know, or a Kawhi Leonard and a Paul George when they were together. That's that's when it becomes really difficult. And so fitting him in, and his contract in on a new roster is is the big, big challenge uh, for any team that's looking to absorb that. And oh, by the way, Mark, the Bulls want something back. They AK just told us on Sunday that they don't want to take a bad deal in exchange for Zach Levine. So you've got all of these forces working against the Bulls in terms of trying trying to find a willing, um, you know, trade partner. How realistic is it that they say, okay, we're not getting what we want this summer. Let's bring him back. Let's let's see if he's healthy. Let other teams see that he's healthy. Put him back in his two guard role, uh, and then say, let's revisit this trade deadline. And I think the only thing, Darnell, that could cause problems with that is 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 Zach going to come back and want to be here. Is that, you know, if he's going to come back and be like, hey, I'm going to show people I'm healthy. If the Bulls revisit the trade, great, but I'm going to be a good teammate. Yeah, and the Bulls believe that he will remain a, a consummate pro, uh, which he's been uh, for the most part throughout his seven seasons here in Chicago. Um, most people will say that Zach Levine has conducted his business incredibly well through a lot of incredibly difficult circumstances uh, over his tenure here with the Bulls. So uh, there have been some hiccups, some missteps, uh, but there have been frustrations. I mean, he's had to deal with a lot of losing. He's had to deal with uh, several injuries now in his career. So uh, you, that's understandable, the frustration level. The the My question, Stacey, is how is he going to fit uh, and is he going to hinder the growth and development of guys like Kobe White? and Ayo DeSumo, and Patrick Williams to a degree. Even though they're different positions, Zach takes up a lot of space on the roster, a lot of usage, a lot of minutes. His role is going to be big. Zach Levine is not a six-man. He's not a bench player. So if he's going to be on the roster, how will the other young guys that we're all excited to see develop, how will they develop? Well, and you also got to throw Vooch in there as well because another veteran guy who's used to being one of the main guys, now his role could change as well with this youth movement because the team is going to play much faster because if watching the summer league and we're watching guys, half the roster is not going to be here, but you see the style of play that they're playing. And you get Zoe back uh, with Giddy, and that's another uh, added piece that we didn't figure into all this. You know, where do they go with all that? Yeah, it looks like they're going to be active at the trade deadline next year, or at least in talks. Uh, that's my expectation, because this roster, as you mentioned, Stacey, you alluded to it. That top 10 pick, that's a precious yes. asset for this Bulls team right now as they're trying to retool, rebuild, youth movement, whatever phrase you want to use. They need that top 10 protected pick to not go to San Antonio. Uh, and if they keep it, that's a that's a ve very valuable asset in their uh, in their in their in their toolbox that they can use to rebuild this roster. And if they don't have it, you don't really know where they're going to get a superstar from. Um, maybe they trade some of these young guys and package them, uh, but they don't have the draft capital and they need this, this top 10 pick. But what, it, here's my question, Darnell is okay. Let's say they stand pat with, you know, you got Zoe coming back. You got, you know, Zach, you got Vooch. That really puts that top 10 pick in danger because you have enough talent to win with just those three guys. And the East is terrible. And the East is bad. <laughs> and and so bad. that that is kind of like that's kind of like putting a damper on this whole thing because those guys are gonna come back and let's say they put up their numbers they put up last year. And then you get Kobe that takes the next step. And then Patrick Williams takes it. Now you're looking at yourself playing yourself out of that pick. You know, maybe being a team that wins 40 games, 42 games, and now you find yourself losing that pick. It sounds like you're reading The Athletic, Stacey. I just wrote that exact <laughs> article last week. My favorite, my favorite guy. You know I'm reading, baby. I appreciate it. No, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Zach Levine, for all the critics, uh, he is incredibly talented. He remains one of the best scorers in the league. Uh, in ISO individual scores, Lonzo Ball, if he's even 60% of what he was the last time we saw him, he's going to incredibly help this team. And so 
Vucevic is another guy. Uh, AK loves to call him a double double machine, and he is that. You know, a former All Star who can help this team, and then that bumps everybody down. Jalen Smith, Kobe White, Io DeSumo, uh, even Josh Giddy to a degree. If Lonzo Ball is back and 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 any um, semblance of himself, so I just like liked what this Bulls team has built in terms of youth. And then if you get those veteran guys back, and they actually want to be here, this Bulls team is not uh, one of the bottom third teams in the league, in my opinion. No, no. You know, you mentioned the fact that uh, AK and Mark Eversley met with the beat writers out in Vegas, which uh, is kind of a shocking development. AK does not love to put his business out in uh, the public forum, but I think since he had that press conference uh, after the draft, you know, right, yeah, saying that tra change is coming, and actually that was the, at the end of the season in April, that uh, change is coming, uh, this, this group doesn't work, and now he said, see, I told you, I told you I was going to make changes, and, and, and we're just getting started. What, uh, what struck you most about that little media session in Vegas, and were there any hints of what might be yet to come? Yeah, I mean, they were very candid. We sat down with, excuse me, Arturis Karnaschovas and Mark Eversley, the GM, and, and both were very candid. You know, uh, thank them again for their time. Uh, they didn't have to do that, but Arturis did say that he would update us. Uh, after free agency got underway and, and he was a man of his word and he did that. So uh, hats off to him for keeping his word. Uh, but just their candor, their, their candor, um, the fact that they they talked so eloquently and, and, and fondly of DeMar DeRozan, his time here, uh, they laid out expectations for Patrick Williams saying that it's up to him. They rewarded him with the contract and now they're saying, uh, you know, what he's become, what he's going to become is up to him. Uh, and then they talked about Zach Levine and, and Nikola Vucevic, honestly and openly, I thought, in, in terms of where they stand in the organization. And I throw Lonzo Ball in there as well. So uh, just their, their candor was very impressive to me. I, I tell you what. Uh, listen, hmm. I, I want that number one pick, man. Because there's <laughs> generational talent in that, in that draft next year. There, there's some generational talent. That Cooper flag is the real deal. And if you got a shot to get that, kid next year and then you play him alongside Bucellus. Woo, 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 woo. Oh Lord have mercy. We had some nice Patrick Williams, we had some nice forwards. So that's why I'm a little nervous, Darnell, because of course I always want to win. I always want to win. But in this situation where they have already gone young, they've already shown they're gonna go young and they're gonna retool with young players. You know, because if you look at the look at the look what they've done. You got Giddy you got Io, you got Kobe White, you got Jalen Smith, you got Duarte. They all have close to 700, and Patrick Williams, 700, 800 starts in the NBA. That's a lot of experience for some young kids that have only hadn't really, really found the success that, you know, some of the other people have had. But that's still a lot of experience, and that's going to give the Bulls an opportunity next year to be a lot better than what people think. And if you bring Zach back in the fold and Vooch back in the fold, and then you got, you know, Zoe back in the fold, man, I, I just think that pick is going to just, just disappear. Well, well, two things, Stacey, to your point, I was talking to um, our guy, Sam Vecini uh, for the athletic does a great job covering the draft for us uh, while we were out in Vegas. And he reminded us all the entire NBA crew for the athletic, that this is not a one man draft. There's about yep. four five, six guys in this draft. Uh, who are going to come out and be very, very special impact players, he says. So uh, look, keep an eye on that. And then the other thing is that, you know, you, you mentioned these young guys. They're all dogs, Stacey, yeah. as you know. You know, Ayo Dosumu, Kobe White, uh, Josh Giddy has a little bit of that in them that we saw in Oklahoma City coming into this league at like 19 years old uh, and, and playing a prominent role. So these guys, uh, Patrick Williams needs to be more consistent, but Jalen Smith also has that that activity level. So um, I, I'm a believer in these young guys. I believe that they all have something to prove and they're going to come out um, and, and have chips on their shoulder and, and, and show the world that the Bulls are better than what they're being projected to be. When you look at the NBA landscape over some of the moves that were made in free agency in the draft, how much have things changed? I know Boston will go in as the favorite. Earlier, Stacey and I talked about Jalen Brown getting snubbed for Team USA. That might not sit real well with him as they go to training camp, but Boston, I'm sure, will be the favorite. Oklahoma City getting Caruso and Hartenstein will really improve that that group. How do you see the the landscape change based on what's happened so far in the offseason? Yeah, you mentioned the, the team that I really have an eye on. That's Oklahoma City. And because we know what Alex Caruso brings uh, and Hartenstein being the big that 
everyone could see Oklahoma City needed. And so now they've got uh, a versatile um, backcourt, uh, all do everything player in Alex Caruso and then a big in Hardenstein. So uh, I'm really high on the Thunder. I think they can make the NBA Finals, if not win it all next season, especially led by Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, but then there's also a lot of parity still, Mark. I, I mean, you tell me if you disagree, but these teams still seem neck and neck. I mean, there's no clear cut uh, to me favorite so far yet in in, in uh, the off season. I like the Knicks too. I think the Knicks did really well for themselves. Yeah, the Knicks. I mean, they got the Villanova guys, all the Villanova guys. But I, I, I look at it like this, Darnell. Like, I don't see repeat champions in the next few years. I, I think it's going to be somebody different every year. It's going to be kind of like San Antonio. I think Denver. I think if you looked at the finals this year, if you throw Denver out there against Boston, I think it's all styles and matchups. I think Denver beats Boston. You know, with Joker. Um, I don't think. I don't think Minnesota beats Boston. But it's all styles and matchups. So I don't see. Uh, Boston repeat next year. I, I think you're going to see a different champion, um, you know, especially with free agency. You know, I, I just don't see you seeing a team being dominant and saying we're going to win two, three championships in a row. I think that's over. Stacy, you're the perfect person to ask. Do you like that uh, where, where it seems like the league is gravitating to? I mean, you know, you were part of the dynasty. So what, what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts is, of course, if I'm on the dynasty, I want to win. I want to win. <laughs> OK, but if I'm a team looking on the outside in, I'm like, this is this is this. Now we got to stop this. This They winning too much over here. We got we got to do something to stop them. So you know, it's a double edged sword because people want to see dominance. And, and there's other there's another group. People wants to see somebody different every year. Um, I think it's good for the league because you're going to be going through a transition. We talked about this last week. There's going to be a transition period as, as Steph's getting older. You know, uh, LeBron is, is is older. You know, some of these older guys are starting to, you know, make it to the last, you know, the last stretch. Who is this next group of superstars that's going to carry the league? Or is it going to be a team? Is it going to be team oriented? You know, that's the dilemma they had when, you know, when Michael retired and, you know, when Bird retired and, and Magic retired, you had a whole bunch of young talent. Charles Barkley, you had, you know, Dominique Wilkins, you had Michael Jordan, you had a, you had a whole talent full of guys coming in and can carry the league individually. And then when those guys retired, it became more of a team game. They were focusing more on the San Antonio Spurs as a team, team goal. Pistons. So I, yeah, Pistons. So I see that going back into that kind of a transition. I like it. I like it. I mean, I think you have enough star power throughout the league now where you have one or two guys carrying teams and they're all entertaining. So it's not just like you've got the bad boy Pistons or not even – yeah, the 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 two thousand what was it twenty two thousand four Pistons where they didn't have you know a sort quote unquote star, um, you know I don't think you're gonna have teams like that. You've got the Anthony Edwards, the John Morants, the Shea Gilgis Alexander sprinkled in throughout the league to where any team that can make a deep run is going to be led by some star power. I think that's entertaining. You like Clay Thompson going to Dallas to team with uh, Luca and Kyrie? I love it. I love it. I think Clay's got a lot left in the tank, and he's a perfect fit. I think next to Kyrie and Luca as a third scoring option doesn't have to do as much. Uh, can catch and shoot, baby. That's that's yeah. his game. And I, and I think with him, I think he was he was hurt so bad last year with the way he perceived the Golden State was doing him. It was like, hey, look, you know, I helped you guys win four titles. Y'all paid everybody. Everybody got paid in this organization. Jordan Poole, you know, uh, you know, Draymond. Everybody got paid, but I didn't get paid. And I played hurt, and I gave you everything I got, and this is how y'all going to treat me. And I think, I think his feelings were hurt last year because he's an emotional player. He's a guy that plays on emotion. And I just thought last year his, his feelings were hurt. He just wasn't in it last year. And, and we can't forget he was at one point one of the best two-way yes. guards in, in basketball. I mean, yes. he brought it defensively, too, yes. in his day. So, yes. Uh, yes. you know, I love to see him sort of go and get his, his uh, second act in Dallas. I can't wait to see how that plays out for him. And your guy, Russell Westbrook, on the move again. We've told you when Darnell's on in the past, he used to cover the Thunder as their beat writer down there in Oklahoma City. Uh, traded to the Jazz, he's going to be bought out, and then he'll sign with uh, the Denver Nuggets. Now, they lost KCP. What kind of role do you think Westbrook will play there? I know that uh, Jokic is a fan of him. Do you think that he can really contribute still at this point in his career? Absolutely. Uh, Russell Westbrook, obviously one of the most electric guards in NBA history, uh, if you can get 20 minutes from him off the bench uh, and, and he comes in, he takes care of the basketball, gives you some scoring, I think he will do his job. Fills in for Jamal Murray at times. Uh, I think that's all that the Nuggets can ask for. And so 
he's more than capable of, I think, can still still contributing that. And Chris we, Dunn went to the Clippers in that. Thing. Yeah, I saw that. He got yeah. paid too. Good yeah, for him. Good for he, Chris Dunn. He yeah. was playing in minor leagues, and, and the people thought he was worked done. his way back. Worked his way back in. Okay, so Darnell, we had surprise teams this year. I called last year. I said Minnesota would be the team to watch, just because if if Carl Anthony Towns says, "Hey, Anthony's the man. Anthony Edwards is the man. I'm giving him the role," and I thought they would be the team that surprised everybody, which they were most of the year. They were pretty dominant, and then they got into the playoffs and they ran into that Mavericks team. Who's the surprise team this year that like that is like you know I don't want to say it's a surprise but the team that you see that can make that jump that Minnesota made that Oklahoma City made who's a team this year that you see doing that? The only one that I could see is San Antonio, and that's because of Wimby. That is because the the moves for Chris Paul and Harrison Barnes. I'm one of the, Chris Paul's biggest fans and have been for 20 years, uh, but he's got to prove that he can stay healthy, and that's my biggest reservation. Uh, with the Spurs taking that jump this season, even though they're going to be well coached, obviously have superstar uh, talent and and veteran experience now. So um, if Chris Paul can stay healthy, I, I'd probably say the San Antonio Spurs. Okay. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can see that uh, Darnell's sporting a very nice uh, Money Talks polo shirt there. Got the swag going for your sub stack, Money Talks 101. You were in Vegas for a few days. That didn't mess with your financial planning, did it? <laughs> 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 hey man, I'm I'm used to it now. So so fortunately, Vegas is not uh, a money pit. Like okay. maybe if I was younger, Mark, I'd I'd still be at the table or something. But <laughs> I learned my lesson a long time ago. Is it hot out? It was hot in Vegas when you're there. Oh man, Stacy, I think the hottest I saw was 113, maybe 114. Oh, it was miserable. Like I'm so baby. happy to be back in it's in Chicago, like Vegas, baby. <laughs> hey, oh. tell tell the folks a little more about yeah. your your Substack. And, and yeah, I appreciate it. It's uh, moneytalks101.substack.com. Uh, I write about personal finance in a, with a twist. I basically tell my story of how I used to be bad with money, and now I'm a little bit better with money. And I'm teaching my daughter, Parker. She's 10 uh, now, be 11 in December, just teaching her and others uh, how to make the same transition and, and learn uh, a little bit more about how to be smart with money. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, I forgot to tell you, my surprise team this year, I got called last year, Timbers. I called Timberwolves. Yeah, you did. Uh, my surprise team this year, the Orlando Magic. Yeah, they could I, take a jump. I, yeah. I, I can see them taking a huge jump this year. Yes. They added KCP to all those young, yep. big guys. Yeah, they need it. Well, he, gives you, he gives you an outside shooter, gives you a veteran defensive player, guy knows how to play the game. He's not going to hurt you offensively or defensively. I, I see them making a huge jump. I like them. The top of the East is the opposite of the bottom. I mean, the top of the East is tough. And yeah. so that that would be my only concern with the Orlando Magic, still being a young team, being able to make that jump. Do you think with all the moves New York made, and they made some great moves, I think losing Hardenstein really hurts them, but all the moves that they made, do you think that they have enough to possibly come out of the Eastern Conference? I, I don't think they do because I think Julius Randle – and being on that team and so used to being the main guy for so long now has had to relinquish that role to Jalen Brunson. And now you got all these other guys on this team that that ball is moving around to everybody else. Do you think that becomes a problem for New York if he stays in that uh, stays in New York? Yeah, they might have to make a tough decision on Julius Randle um, sooner rather than later because of some of the things that you just mentioned, Stacey. Uh, and then they give, you know, the contracts out and all of this money. They're going to have to figure out a way to make it work from a cap standpoint moving forward as well. So um, I do like a lot of the moves that the Knicks have made. Part of me just can't believe in the Knicks, man. I like the way they play ball as a team, but they're still the Knicks. They're going to find a way to blow it. Yeah, they haven't won a title since 1973. Hey, when you were in Vegas, uh, you know, the network, ESPN's tripping all over themselves talking about Bronny James. And, and I, I wish the kid well. He's got a, lot, a ton of pressure on him. But he finally made a three-point shot in his fourth game out there the other night. Um, he's got a lot of work to do. What, what, what are NBA people saying about the whole Lakers situation and, and LeBron in his last couple of years? Are they, are they kind of discounting the Lakers as even being a, a relevant threat next year? Yeah, it looks certainly looks like they struck out this summer, um, and that was disappointing to a lot of Lakers fans, I know. But, you know, Bronny doesn't seem to have the same buzz inside the league as he does in the media. Okay. And that, that, I mean, like he actually was staying at my same hotel in Las Vegas. I, I didn't bump into him, but he, he walked by me twice, and it was just 
you know, just a regular, you know, summer league player. He had a security guard with him, but I thought you were gonna say you were taller than him. You bumped into him and you were taller than him. <laughs> Get off him, Mark. I looked, I looked down at him when he when he came by. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just I, I don't think I don't think insiders uh, you know, I think they want to give him a chance to, sure. to prove himself. And so, you know, to try to be fair to him, I think most people inside the league look at it like that. Yeah, Stacy and I have talked about it. We're, we we both agree. There's there's nothing wrong with LeBron trying to help his kid out. I mean, you'd help your kid out in whatever field they want to get into. Listen, anybody who's hating on LeBron James right now and and, and saying it's nepotism, I'm gonna tell you right now. If you had the opportunity to bring you to bring your son or daughter, you would do it too. So hey, I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at him. I, I I will say this is put an added pressure on the kid to yeah. perform. There's so many eyes on him to perform. Um, I think he could have. I I do think he's a pro. I, I think in my personal opinion, that he probably should have stayed in school probably until his junior year or senior year. He could have been a three-year player. Especially after the year. heart episode. Yeah, and, and I just think, you know, had he gone to like a coach like, uh, you know, uh, Hurley in Connecticut or somewhere, a really good coach that could get the most out of what he can do, I think he'd be a much better pro uh, in that situation than he is now. I think he's going to struggle now because he hasn't played. He hasn't played almost in a whole year. And now you're throwing him out here playing against NBA guys. And nobody, listen, Darnell, you've been covering the summer league for a long time. Nobody looks good in summer league. I, I remember Trey Young was out there. Trey Young, people were questioning whether Trey Young should have been drafted when he was playing <laughs> the summer league. And, and I played in the summer league when it used to be out, you know, be out in California, you know, out at Loyola. So, you know, you're going up against guys that are hungry, guys who are fighting for roster spots. They'll do anything to, to look good or make you look bad. And that means they're going to play hard defense. They're going to pick you up 94 feet. They're going to come through screens, run through screens. They're going to do whatever it takes to showcase themselves. And you can't blame them because they're trying to get a, they're trying to get a roster spot. Hey, Stacy, Bronny might have been a better player in three years, but Bron ain't going to be in the league in three years. <laughs> uh, Bronny said it's the time to strike. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> He got that contract. I think he got the the richest contract for a second rounder. Oh, hey, yeah. He ain't going. But the Bryce Young, yeah, Bryce, his son Bryce is coming along pretty soon. He might try to stay another two years. <laughs> he just might. Yeah, he might. He ain't going nowhere. They had Bronny mic'd up on the ESPN telecast last night. I swear, if you closed your eyes, he sounded exactly like his dad. Did he? Yeah, exactly. It was, he, yeah. Hey, listen. The kid, the kid's got some talent. I think he's got so much pressure on him. I think it's probably more pressure than he probably thought. You know, at the high school level, is different. You know, you got cameras and people, you know, the other high schools taunting you and everything, yeah. but you're still going up against high school kids. You're going up against, you know, damn near grown men now. And yeah. so you got – that's an adjustment for anybody. You know, I mean, you look at Caitlin Clark in the WNBA. As good as she was at the college level, she had to make an adjustment coming into the pro game. Because she, I mean, she she struggled a little bit her first few games. But Not now, struggling anymore. But now she's figured it out. <laughs> now she's figured out that I got unlimited range. I don't need to shoot the ball inside the three point line. She was behind the back pass. Oh night. man, I'm gonna tell you what, that, that girl bad. That girl yeah, 19 bad. 19 assists. Man. A they need to get they need to get her teammates some hands. Team, <laughs> she leading the league in turnover because her damn teammates can't catch the damn ball. Allah. We're really stretching you, Darnell. You're doing WNBA analysis all of a sudden. <laughs> but, but we appreciate you hanging in there. Good luck with the Money Talks 101 Substack. Best to Parker. And we'll be talking again real soon when training camp gets going. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks Darnell Mayberry, our dog. guest on Give Me the Hot Sauce. One of the we'll best in the business. We'll talk a little uh, football and what we're watching as we wrap it up on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Our thanks to Darnell Mayberry for joining us on Give Me the Hot Sauce. As always, in our third segment, we'd like to uh, welcome in some questions from the audience, people who have been following us on YouTube and taking part in the chat. In the chat, we got a question from William Hornado. How much will Matas Buzelis play in the beginning, middle, and end of the season? He's wondering about the progression as a rookie. I, I think in the beginning, he's going to be limited. Because yeah. they're, they're, they've got so many other players ahead of him. I think they're going to bring him along slowly. Um, but I don't, I don't think they'll be able to keep him out of the lineup. Because, you know, I think when you go back to look at what how Billy has been with all the rookies, they've had to earn minutes. You know, Iowa didn't play for the first, you know, the first uh, two months of the season before they put him out there. And he had to get on the floor just on the defensive ability, not scoring. This kid, though, I think is, is, is too talented. Like, it's going to be hard keeping him on the floor because his practice habits are going to get him on the floor because that's where you earn minutes for young players in practice. And then when you get the opportunity in the preseason game or you get an opportunity in the game to show what you can do, then that gets you in the game because now fans want to see you more. And I think everyone is excited to see this kid just based off the of summer league. It's, it's going to be hard keeping him off the floor. 
Yeah, a kid like him who's 6'10", and as athletic as he is, he can jump out of the gym. If he gets that three-point shot going, Billy's going to want him on the floor. No and he, question and he about plays it. with, like, a moxie. Like, he plays with attitude. And sometimes in this league, you know, we like, you, know, you think about, okay, if we would have had this kid when, when, uh, when Grayson Allen uh, clotheslined Caruso, I guarantee this kid would have thrown blows. Mm-hmm. I guarantee he would have went out there and thrown some punches. We had some guys kind of like, you know, you know, they didn't, we didn't do anything. But I guarantee this kid be the first one off the bench ready to give somebody a two-piece. Yeah, I think he's going to become a fan favorite really quickly. Uh, Will's on fire asks, can you see a scenario where Zach plays out his contract with the Bulls? He's got three more years left on that deal. No. Right. No, I, I just don't. I don't think it's in the, in the cards. Um, the only thing I can see happening, like, if they bring him back, which I think that's what's going to happen. They bring him back. And the Bulls just are in Lonzo and everybody's back, and they start winning. Like, it's, that's, uh, and Mark, that's not a scenario that I don't think a lot of people want to see. But it could very well happen that they could turn around and and then all of a sudden, hey, we like Zach. Zach likes it here. Zach likes playing with these guys. And I can see them keeping him for the, the remainder of his contract. I don't think that's happening. I don't think it's going to happen yeah. either, but it's a possibility. Yeah. Finally, uh, from Tim Hanner, he's challenging Stacy. It's easy to do that behind a computer. Yeah. He says, I love you, Stace, but you're delusional. This is a 21-win team. Now, before Stacy comments, look at the East. You got the Pistons. You got Washington. You got Charlotte. Brooklyn is tanking. They could, yes. they could be the worst team in the yes. NBA. And did we mention Charlotte? Yeah, there's yep. like five teams that are probably worse than the Bulls on paper. Yes, and there's some in the West. So here's the deal. Here's the deal, uh, Tim. Okay. If they bring back Zach in the first half of the season, you got Vooch still on the roster. You got Zoe coming back on the roster. You throw in six kids who have over 700 starts in the NBA and has had some success as starters in the NBA, your chances of winning games are a lot better than if you had six kids who were just coming into the NBA for the first year. Uh, I can see this team doing better than what everybody thinks. I, I can also see this team... With, with constructed the way it is, unless they get rid of Zach and Vooch. I, I, if it, it was just Zach and Vooch gone, I could say, you know, 30, 30 wins. But I say with those guys, you, you're liable to get 40. Yeah, and I didn't mention Toronto and Atlanta. They're not going to be real good either. Yeah. So there's yeah. a lot of, a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams out there, man. I mean, so that's the, that's not out of the realm of possibility as the way the roster is, is constructed right now. And the idea of bringing Zach back and Vooch is still on the roster and Zoe comes back. And, and looking at the videos I've seen, Zoe, Zoe looks like he's ready to go. He looks healthy. So, and you got Giddy, you got, you know, Io, you got Kobe. The only thing bad about this is it, it it hampers the growth of guys who have now shown that they're ready to take that next step. Kobe White, because Zach plays the same position. Uh, Zoe comes back, plays a point guard. That takes, you know, ball out of Giddy's hands, takes the ball out of Kobe's hands. So it's like, wow, man, that's the only negative about all this. Yeah, you know, you look around the East, there's a lot of teams that are either in a rebuilding mode or just don't, don't have a lot of talent right now. And, you know, while the Bulls, are, are reluctant to, you know, commit to a full rebuild. Uh, they are going with a younger team, and we'll see how that develops. You look at the Chicago sports landscape right now, the Blackhawks have added some veterans. I think they're going to be a team that starts to make a move upwards. But both of Chicago's baseball teams, as we come out of the All-Star break, are in last place. The one team that fans are really excited about is the Bears. And the Bears veterans report for practice at Hallis Hall on Friday. The first full team practice is on Saturday. They got the contract done with Caleb Williams and with Roma Dunze. Hard knocks is coming. This is going to be fun. This whole training camp thing is really going to be fun to follow. Uh, I tell you what, if you're a Bears fan, you're excited about the way this team is going and the the new pieces that they've gotten. Uh, I'm, I'm still concerned about offensive line. I'm not worried about them scoring points. I think they're going to be able to score points, but are they going to be able to protect this rookie quarterback all year long? That's the biggest concern. Um, but they're going to be fun to watch. I mean, this was a team last year that – Probably should have won nine games last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this year the the realistic goal is it should be double digits. They should win ten or eleven games, and uh, they have the talent to do it. Defense is still good. Um, you know they got they addressed some issues on defense. Uh, it's got to be 10, 11 wins, man. I'd be disappointed if it was if it was single digits. 
Yeah, training camp gets underway. We'll have our guy Mark Grody throughout the year Mark. checking in with us and giving us updates on what's going on at training camp and throughout the year. So make sure that you follow us for that. We'll be doing a lot of Bears talk as they get rolling because they look like they're going to be one of the more exciting teams in the NBA. In this I'm hard- looking forward to hard knocks. Yeah, it, it's going to be fun. Because the Bears have always refused to be on hard knocks. So it's going to be interesting to see like behind the scenes and, and how how all the interactions are. And, and I, I'm really – because that's a really great – Thing that the NFL puts that hard knock so you get to it takes fans behind the scenes and you know in the locker room in the hotels or in the dorms it just takes you behind the scenes you get a chance to see what it's like to be a pro uh you never want to hear that uh bring your playbook down uh coach wants to <laughs> coach see wants you because I'm gonna yeah. tell you right now they, they, Stacey uh bring your playbook coach wants to see you I said, no, nah, here, man, you take the playbook down the <laughs> coast. Off. You're not embarrassing me on dash on television. My ass is walking out the damn door. I know what this means. I done watched 100 hard knocks. You ain't, have, you ain't cutting me like that. Hell no. I got family watching. Hell Speaking no. of hard knocks, that takes us a uh, perfect segue into what we're watching. I don't know if you've been following this, but they tried something new this year where they did uh, hard knocks on the New York Giants and their yeah. offseason moves. And, you know, you know Ryan McGuffey over yes. at NBC Sports Chicago? He was friends in college with Joe Shane, who's the, oh, general, the manager general manager of the New York Giants. And I've been amazed at the access that they're giving. I mean, they're showing Joe Shane, the GM of the New York Giants, talking with his head coach, talking with the owner about personnel moves. And, and the whole thing, you know, with the running back that they didn't want to bring back. Saquon Barkley. Yeah, you know, and, and the owner said, I won't be able to sleep at night if he goes to Philadelphia. And yeah, damn if he yeah, didn't go to Philadelphia. Yeah. Shane didn't want to bring him back. And they, they had all this. They just put this on blast. Now, I wonder yeah. what, that, what the repercussions of all this could well, be. Well, because somebody could get fired. Yeah, because, that's true. Because that, I mean, you know, Saquon Barkley is still a force in this game. Yeah. And to allow him to go in the same division with you, oh, you got to yeah, play him yeah. now two times a year. And it was over like a million dollars a year, yeah, which is exactly. nothing for a professional sports and, franchise. And, but here's the thing. The, the running back market in the NFL is not valued. Yeah. Which is, which amazes me because you want a guy. There's so many good running backs in this league. You want a guy to get a thousand yards. You want a guy to be the you know the to be the ball carrier, three four hundred carries a year. But you don't value him as it being important. Saquon Barkley was also being the Wildcat quarterback. He ran the ball. He's like 27, oh, acting my. like he's 35. I, I was really disappointed uh, again how they treat the running back. There were so many Frazier running backs out there this year that were like really great running backs, and it's like. The, the value, alignment is valued more. Wide receivers are valued more. Quarterbacks are valued more than everybody. And it's like the running backs, like, get whatever's left, you know. And when so they hold out for more money, they might miss the whole season because, well, we just plug somebody else in. We're going to get a guy from the USFL or someone coming in. This guy was, you know, working at uh, Portillo's. He used to be a running back. We're going to bring him in. And then they, they, they just fill the spot with anybody. So the value of, of a running back is so low that a guy like Saquon Barkley, they're they're fighting over a million dollars for a great player. Yeah, it means it, everything to the organization that he's good off the field. He's never in trouble. He's he's where he's supposed to be. He battled back from injury. I mean, he 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 just exemplifies everything you want in a good football player and a good person. And you're haggling over a million dollars, and now he's over in Philadelphia where you got to see him twice a year. You you already had a hard time with Philadelphia before he was over there. Now you're going to have a really hard time because yeah. he's going to be extra motivated because after seeing this on Hard Knocks, because he's <laughs> seeing it, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. The other thing, interesting thing was they they showed a, a conversation between Joe Shane and Barkley, and you wonder if Barkley even knew that that yeah. was being recorded. Yeah. I mean, that, that hey, can cause some I'm problems, too. I might sue. I mean, you know, they had him talking to Barkley's agent. That could cause some repercussions down the line where they're like, you can't put our business out yeah. in a public view. Yeah. Because yeah. what if what if it was some bad some bad being said? Yeah, you know, and that's out there on hard knocks. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you got to protect yourself because that that could be that that could be a really bad situation. So, I mean, he might have had to sign off on that though. He might have yeah. had to sign off on that and gave them the okay to use his voice or whatever. Because uh, that's the same thing that happened like in the Real Housewives of uh, of uh, Florida when Scotty Pippen's ex wife wanted to have Scotty on there. Yeah, and Scotty didn't want to have nothing to do with that show. And they wanted Scotty to call in, and Scotty refused to do tried it. To trap him. They tried to trap him on it, but yeah. he, he refused to do it. So if you don't have the uh, HBO Max streaming service, you should go out and order it. because Go get the, it. It's nice. The, the Bears are going to be featured on Hard Knocks, which is going to start in a couple of weeks. And this Giants thing is fantastic. First couple episodes, they had 
They had Caleb Williams in for an interview. They had Roma Dunze in for an interview before the draft. Really behind-the-scenes stuff that I think you'd enjoy. So what's uh, your recommendation this week? I'm going with the boys. The boys are back right here. My superhero uh, show that's on Prime. Uh, it's really, really gotten really good and deep. And, oh, man, it's, it's real graphic. It's always been graphic. <laughs> always graphic, It's always been yeah. graphic, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really good show. I, I advise people to watch. And then there's one more show. That I don't know if everybody's watching. It's the House of Dragons. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, man. This year, the House of Dragons has been awesome because the dragons have been more in play than they ever been. And so now you get a chance to see if you're a Game of Thrones person like I am, you know, it shows you how the Game of Thrones came about and the history that that it brought with it. So now it's like the prequel. So yeah. it's, it's a great show. It's a great show. The dragons are awesome. They look real. Uh, so I'm looking forward to I think they're down to the last two episodes of uh, season two. Well, you know what else is awesome is Stacy's Barbecue Sauce. If you yes, uh, is. haven't had a chance to go over to Jewel Osco and pick some up, now they're going to be in Mariano's, which is going to be a yes. great outlet for them with all the great dun, products dun, dun, that dun, they dun. feature. And you can also order a bottle yourself if you go online. Uh, our hot sauce packer, Timmy Whisper, yes. take care of it. He's, he's looking for the hot tool girl right now and trying to <laughs> – he doesn't have no time to be packing hot sauces. So so he's got the day off. He'll be back next week. Matter of fact, I'll see him tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, make sure, you, make sure you order the hot sauce. The hot sauce is awesome. Uh, four delicious flavors. Go to uh, gimmethehotsauce.com. You can buy it there. We will be – we're negotiating with uh, Mariano's as we speak, so we will be in there at some point. Uh, but you can get it online right now. All right, and is Mike here waiting for you outside? Mike is outside. He's out there like he always has. He got his hair cut. Yeah. You know, at first, you know, Mike had his hair super long. I, you know, I thought he was one of like the old rockers, like you know, <laughs> Rat and and uh, you know, White Snake. He had his hair is too long, and then he got a haircut, and he picked me up at the airport. I couldn't even recognize him. Is that and, right? Yeah, he looks short, but he, yeah. you know, he, he he he's he's back. He's healthy. He's strong. And uh, shout out to my boy Mike Amaroth. He's he's and, always and he's listening in his uh, luxury vehicle. And he's so probably Mike, having a picnic in his luxury vehicle right now. Mike, you can come on in. The pizza's uh, yeah, the pizza here, good. Mike. Come on in, man. Come on in. So let, me, let me. I'm gonna give a shout out to Windy City. Windy City. I'm gonna tell y'all something. Windy City. Windy City is awesome. I'm, uh, Windy City. I'm telling you, man. I, anytime I call Windy City, they always there for me. Yeah. Oh, we were in a rainstorm the other night. When it rained on Saturday night, when they're like, I had all the hail and all yeah, that. Yeah, that was terrible. And Mike, Mike drove. I had to go see Adam, and then uh, I had my girlfriend with me and uh, Angela. And, and it, it was when we went in, it wasn't raining. We came out, it was pouring cats and dogs. It was so bad you couldn't see the cars in front yeah, of you. Yeah. And Mike navigated us home from all the way from Marriott Park, got us home safely. Uh, I fell asleep in the car because I was like, I'm going to sleep. Because it was like 12 o'clock. It was past my bedtime. I told Adam, I said, oh, he's the only person I would go see him DJ at 11 o'clock yeah, at night. Yeah. So Mike got us home safely. Uh, and Windy City does the same thing. They do a great job. Uh, they provide championship service, making reservation. For you guys, it's so easy. It's a slam dunk. Let Windy City break the full core pressure of traffic and get you to your destination in style and on time. Contact them at 847 916-9300 or go to windycitylimos.com. They have buses, they have party van, they got everything. Anything you need. It's the number one limousine service in Chicago. And I I, I swear by it. I only use them and uh they get me everywhere I need to go. There you go. Personal recommendation from Stacy King. Want to thank our great crew, Cisco and D and Nick, for doing fantastic work as and always. Baby Mateo. Yeah, and baby Mateo, welcome on board. And <laughs> our thanks to Darnell Mayberry. Make sure to check out his uh, Substack, Money Matters 101. And uh, we'll be back at you with a new show next Hold week. Hold on one, one second, Mark. Yeah. I, I just wish we could see Cisco's shorts uh, that he's wearing, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, I know. Is there, is, there, is there a way, Cisco, we can get Cisco's shorts? Ducks on the pond, huh? Ducks on the pond. That's what they are. Well, he, let me tell you what it looked like. He's got pink shorts with yeah, ducks pink, on pink, short, pink shorts with little yellow duckies on them. It, it, yeah, oh, yeah I, so, you know. Listen, hey, listen. And I'm not saying that Cisco's my man. Cisco's a hard worker. You know, we, you know, we we gave him a raise. We thought he'd buy some different pants, but uh, Dally's not doing it. He's looking for yeah, his raise. He's buying them at the dollar store. <laughs> you know, so it's okay. But shout out to Cisco and his little tight little ducky pants. 
They're horrible, America. I wish you could see them. I'm going to start taking pictures of this stuff and make put it out <laughs> on social media. This is terrible. All right. Hey, listen, drive home safely. And uh, thanks again, all you listeners and viewers who watch yeah, our show. Yeah, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. And uh, keep keep coming on. Keep signing on. You make the show go. And uh, we totally appreciate you guys. So drive home safely, Chicago. Beep, beep. Hey, what's up? This is Stacey King. And I'm Timmy Whispers. Of Give Me the Hot Sauce Podcast. Each week, make sure you join us. Timmy Whispers, what do they need to hit? They need to hit like and subscribe so they get all the notifications and news from our podcast. That boy is sweet. Just make sure <laughs> when the video's over, click to the left, and you'll hear our previous videos for the previous week and have some fun because we'd love to have fun on Give Me the Hot Sauce Podcast. Woohoo! <laughs>